Hello Future MDs, here's part 2 of Physics Rational of NMAT Practice Set 2014. Before we proceed, I'd like to ask you a favor. Please subscribe to this channel if this has somehow helped you. And also, pwede nyo rin siyang i-share with your friends na kailangan ng ganitong materials. Also, if there are corrections, I'll put it on the pinned comment below. Feel free to comment din kung may mga nakita kayong corrections. Yun lang, thank you and let's start! Number 26. The power rating of an electric motor which draws a current of 5 amperes from a 240 volt line is blank. Okay, yung power, yung formula niya is current times voltage. So, given na tayo ng current na 5 amperes, it multiply natin sa voltage na 240. Yan, so 240 times 5, 0, so 20. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2, 12. So, 1,200. So, yung makukuha nating power is equal to 1,200 watts. Yan. So, equal din yan sa 1.2 kilowatts. So, ito yung final answer natin, which is letter B. Number 27. Electroplating results in a better quality product by applying a relatively... Correct answer dyan is letter D, moderate current for a longer time. So, ganito yung process ng electroplating of copper. Ayan, so hindi ko na i-detail yung explanation. I'll put the link na lang below nung pwede nyo panoorin sa YouTube kung paano yun nangyayari. Ayan, electroplating refers to a process that adds a surface layer of metal to another type of metal. So, yung purpose niya, it's typically used to prevent corrosion and rust and to extend useful life of the metal underneath the electroplated metal. Number 28, which of the following is true when the magnetic flux through a coil at 50 turns is reduced from 0.5 Weber to 0 Weber in 0.2 seconds? So we have a formula for this. So yun yung Faraday's law, yung induced voltage or yung EMF or electromagnetic force equal siya dun sa negative nung number of loops, itong N, times the change in magnetic flux all over the change in time. So, lahat naman yan given. So, let's substitute na lang. So, EMF is equal to negative. Yung N is 50 turns. Nakalagay. 50 times yung change in magnetic flux is 0.5 to 0 Weber. So, bale, final minus initial, so 0 minus 0.5 all over yung change in time. So, 0.2 seconds. So, equal to sa, so negative 50 times negative 0.5 over 0.2. Equal yan sa positive, so 50 times 1 half is equal to 25 over, yung 0.2 can also be written as 2 over 10, diba? So, pwede rin siya isulat as 250 over 2. Yan, tinimes lang natin yung 10 dito sa numerator. We will get 125 volts. So, ito yung final answer natin, which is letter B. Number 29, the equivalent resistance of the circuit shown above is blank. So, kapag parallel yung circuit, itong part na to is parallel. Yan, yung formula for equivalent resistance is 1 over equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over yung R1 plus 1 over yung R2 and so on. Depende kung ilan yung resistances na nasa parallel circuit. So, dito, meron tayong 2 resistances, merong 2 ohms and 2 ohms. So, ipagpa-plus lang natin, bale 1 over 2 ohms plus... 1 over 2 ohms is equal to 1 ohm. Yan. So, wag nyo kalimutan na i-reciprocal pa to. Ito okay lang kasi 1 naman siya. So, yung denominator niya rin is 1. So, hindi ka magkakaproblema pag nakalimutan mong i-reciprocal. Pero kapag kunyari 1 half, kailangan mong gawing 2. Yan. So, yung equivalent resistance is equal to 1 ohm. So, meron kang 1 ohm dito. And then, yung magiging itsura na ng circuit is ganito. Yan, may 1 ohm and 1 ohm. Naka-series na siya. So, yung equivalent resistance niyan, pag pinag-plus mo, magiging 2 ohms. So, ito yung final answer. Letter B, 2 ohms. 
Yan, naglagay din ako ng chart para makita nyo yung pinagkaiba ng series and parallel circuit. Yan, i-review nyo na lang yung formulas, yung voltage sa series, pinag a lang siya, yung voltage sa parallel, equal silang lahat. In terms of current naman, equal lang yung current na nagpo-flow sa series circuit. Sa parallel circuit, ina-add sila. And then, in terms of resistance, yung ginawa natin kanina, ayan, yung equivalent resistance sa series, pinag a And then, yung sa parallel naman, yung reciprocal nung addition ng kada series. Number 30, what happens when a dielectric material is placed in an electric field? So, yung correct answer dito is letter B. The material becomes polarized. So, ito yung itsura ng unpolarized material. So, meron kang dalawang plates and then yung dielectric material yung nasa gitna. So, ito yung itsura ng dielectric capacitor. Ito yung dielectric. Kapag sinabing dielectric material, it's an electrical insulator that can be polarized by an applied electric field. So, magkoconnect ka ng wires dun sa metal plates and then dapat may power source ka to apply electric field. So, pwedeng battery or any power source. And then, due to that electric field, so magkakaroon ka ng positive and negative electrodes dun sa metal plates. And then, pag sinabing Dielectric polarization, ayan, basahin ko muna to. When a dielectric material is placed in an electric field, electric charges do not flow through the material as they do in an electrical conductor, but instead only slightly shift from their average equilibrium positions causing the electric polarization. Ayan, ang lalim din pala. So kapag dielectric polarization, ang nangyayari doon, yung negative charges, ino-orient niya yung sarili niya towards the positive electrodes dun sa metal plates. And then yung positive charges, ino-orient niya yung sarili niya dun sa negative electrodes sa metal plate. And due to that polarization effect or yung orientation nila na organized, yan, nakakapag-store yung kapasitor ng electric energy. Number 31, in the diagram shown above, The focal length of the lens is F. No image will be projected on the screen if a candle is placed. So yung correct answer dito is letter D, between F and the lens. Kapag naglagay ka kasi ng candle dyan between the focal point and the thin lens, yung mapoform mo na image is virtual. So hindi mo siya pwedeng ma-project sa screen. Yan. So ito yung ray diagrams for convex lenses. Kapag yung object mo is nilagay mo beyond the focal point, for example, sa 2F, 3F, 4F, and so on, makakapag-form ka ng real inverted image. As you can see here, meron kang form na real inverted image kasi yung light rays na dumaan dun sa lens will converge at one point. So, makakapag-form ka ng real image. Yan. For an object inside the focal point naman, as you can see here, a virtual erect image will be formed. So, yung mapaparam niya na image is virtual. Kapag sinabing virtual image, na-produce yung image na yon, not because the light rays converge at one point. So, nakikita niyo dito yung light rays actually diverge or hindi sila nag-meet at one point. Pero when you trace back yung diverging light rays, mag-meet sila sa isang point. Kaya mapaproduce yung virtual image. Pero virtual image doesn't really exist. Yan. So, hindi talaga sila mapoproject sa screen. For visualization lang siya. And then, meron tayo dito um, relationship no object position, image position, and then yung mapoproduce na size and nature ng image for concave lens and convex lens. So, I highly suggest na lang that you watch these videos. I'll put the link on the description kasi mahabang discussion ito and mas maganda kung makakakita kayo ng animations para mas maintindihan. Ayan. Also, we have thin lens equation. And meron pang isang equation, yung magnification equation. So, importante na mafamiliarize nyo yung sarili nyo with these equations. Number 32, a lemon is colored yellow because letter B. It reflects only yellow light. So, kung ano yung nare-reflect na kulay ng visible light, so, yun yung nakikita ng mata natin. So, dito, dagdag ko lang na info. 
Ayan, so ito, yung gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible light. So yung visible light, yun yung nakikita natin, yung visible to our eyes. And then, as we move along to the right, nagiging longer yung wavelength, nagiging lower yung frequency niya, and lower yung energy. Possible kasi, pwedeng itanong na, which one has lower energy? Radio waves or gamma rays? Yung mga ganun. So, baka lumabas. And, and then, as you go to the left, so gamma rays, sila yung merong higher energy, higher frequency, and shorter wavelength. Also, familiarize yourselves with the formula no speed of wave. Speed of wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. Number 33, which of the following explains the appearance of a rainbow in the sky after a rainstorm? So, yung correct answer dito, letter C, raindrops act as prisms that separate sunlight into its components. So, ito yung itsura ng prism. So, kaya daw tayo nag- nakakakita ng rainbow dahil yun sa raindrops na nag act as prism. So, parang ganito yung itsura niya. And separate the sunlight into components or yung visible lights. Roy G. Bib. Number 34, which of the following factors is responsible for transmitting waves? So, yung answer dito is letter C, energy. Ayan, yan yung itsura ng wave. So, meron tayong tinatawag na wavelength and amplitude. Yung peak, yun yung highest point ng wave. And then, yung trough, yun yung lowest point ng wave. And then, yung amplitude naman, it is the measure of how big the wave is. The amount of energy carried by a wave is related to the amplitude of the wave. So, kapag high energy, high amplitude din. And then, kapag low energy yung wave, low amplitude or maliit lang yung wave. Yan. And then, pag sinabi naman wavelength, so ito yun, is the distance from particular height on the wave to the next spot on the wave where it is at the same height and going in the same direction. So, for example, dito, peak to peak yung pag-measure no? wavelength or trough to trough. And then, pag sinabi namang frequency, it is a measurement of how many cycles can happen in a certain amount of time. So, for example, dito, yan, kapag sinabing high frequency, yan, mas maraming cycles sa certain amount of time. And due to that, mas shorter lang yung wavelength. And kapag low frequency naman, mas mahaba yung wavelengths kasi mas onti yung cycles na mangyayari in a certain amount of time. Yan. Related din yung frequency sa energy. Kapag high energy yung wave, ayan, high frequency rin. Then kapag low energy yung transmission ng wave, low frequency. Sorry, low frequency. Ayan, dapat frequency to. Number 35, how many images will be formed if a boy stands in front of two mirrors standing at a 45 degree angle to each other? So we have a formula for this one, n is equal to 360 degrees over the angle between the mirrors. And n is the number of images formed, theta is the angle between the mirrors. So dito, sabi daw, 45 degree angle yung form ng dalawang mirrors. So yun yung theta na ilalagay natin dito. So 360 over 45 degree is equal to 8. Pero since this one is an even number, we need to subtract 1. So our final answer will become letter B, 7. And then ito pala yung chart. Nakita ko lang dito sa internet. And I cannot find a complete explanation for this one, yung symmetric, asymmetric, and then yung explanation for the odd and even images. Siguro meron ito sa mga textbooks. So try nyo na lang mag-research sa sarili nyo. Yan, kapag daw yung value ng 360 over yung theta is even, kailangan mo daw mag-minus ng 1 para makuha mo yung number of images na mapoform. And then if add naman, it still depends kung symmetric or asymmetric yung position ng object. So kapag symmetric daw, kailangan mo mag-minus ng 1. And kung asymmetric naman, hindi mo na kailangan mag-minus ng 1. Yung number of images na mo is 360 over theta. So, ito lang pala quick summary about plane mirrors. A plane mirror always forms a virtual image behind the mirror. And the image and object are the same distance from a flat mirror. 
And then the image size is the same as the object size. Also, the image is upright. Number 36, which of the following will result if the number of lines in a diffraction grating of a given width is increased? So, yung correct answer dito is the spectrum produced will be broader. And so, I'll put a link na lang sa description about uh, diffraction grating. And sabi dito, if the number of lines in a diffraction grating of a given width is increased, the spectrum produced will be broader considering that the interference of the waves do not meet until they are further apart. So yung grating, yun yung maliliit na butas dyan dito sa picture. And so kapag in-increase mo daw yung width nyan, yung spectrum will become also broader. Ayan. Number 37, a 10 meter object is placed at a distance 175 meters in front of a lens whose focal length is 50 meters. Which of the following describes the image form? So, ang pinapahanap sa atin dito, kung makikita nyo sa choices, ayan, it is 4 meters long, 4 meters long, 25. So, nagre-refer yun to the height of the image. So, bali, ilist down muna natin yung given. H naught or yung height ng object is, sabi, 10 meters. And then, yung d naught or yung distance ng object is 175 meters. And then, yung focal length is 50 meters. Ang hahanapin natin is yung height ng image para ma-interpret din natin yung nature ng image. Kung long or inverted or erect. So, gagamitan natin to ng thin lens equation. So, since given na tayo ng distance ng object and ng focal length, pwede na natin mahanap yung distance ng image from the lens. So, let's substitute this given. So, itong given na to sa formula na to. So, 1 over 175 plus 1 over distance ng image is equal to 1 over 50 yung focal length. And then, i-isolate natin yung distance ng image or di, equal yan sa 1 over 50 minus 1 over 175. And then, i-multiply natin yung denominator to the least common multiple of 50 and 175. Yung 175 times 2 kasi, di ba? Yan, 350 siya. And then, yung 350, pwede rin siya ma-divide exactly by 50. So, yun na yung gamitin natin. So, i-multiply lang natin yung 350 to the terms. So, 350 over di is equal to 350 over 50 is 7. 350 over 175 is 2. So, minus 2. And then, we have 5. So, i-multiply lang natin tong di to 5. So, we have 350 is equal to 5d sub i. And then, yung distance ng image is 350 over 5. Which is equal to, so 35 divided by 5 is 7. So, meron kang 70 meters na distance of the image from the lens. Yan, so, nakuha na natin yung distance ng image from the lens. Gagamitin naman natin tong magnification equation. Para makuha natin. Ang goal kasi natin makuha yung height ng image. So, meron na tayong nito, ito, and height ng object. So, we're going to substitute na lang. Lagay ko na lang dito, height ng image over yung height ng object is 10. 10 meters is equal to negative distance ng image over distance ng object. So, yung distance ng image na nakuha natin is 70 meters over yung distance ng object na 175 meters. So, height ng image is equal to negative 700. So, multiply nyo lang yung 10 to 70 over 175. So, solve manually. Makukuha nyo is negative 4 meters. So, yung height ng image is 4 meters. So, it's either A or B. Ayan, napakita ko na pala yung sagot. Ayan, it's either A or B. And then, paano natin malalaman kung inverted or erect? Ayan, since negative yung sign na nakuha natin, kapag negative yung sign, ibig sabihin nun, inverted yung image or nakapahiga or nakapabaliktad, nakaganyan siya. 
Kapag naman positive yung nakuha natin sa sa height ng image, ibig sabihin erect yung image. Nakapataas. Ayan. So, yung final answer natin is letter A. It is 4 meters long and inverted. So, dito sa slide na to, pinapakita lang yung nature ng image kapag nakakuha tayo ng value with positive sign and negative sign. Ayan. So, yung distance ng object, lagi daw siyang positive, never negative. And then, yung distance ng image from the lens, real image kapag positive, virtual image kapag negative. Yung height ng object, upward siya or erect kapag positive. Inverted or down downwards kapag negative. Ganun din, same lang sila nung height ng image. And then, yung focal length, converging lens siya kapag positive. Diverging lens siya kapag negative. And then, yung magnification, upright siya kapag positive yung value. And inverted siya kapag negative yung value. Actually, parang pinafollow niya lang yung Cartesian plane. Yung center is yung optical center ng lens. And then, positive kapag nasa right, negative pag nasa left, negative pag nasa baba, positive pag nasa taas. So, parang ganun lang din. Number 38, compared to the wavelengths of visible light, the wavelengths of the radiation in A and B shown above are Yung correct answer dito is letter B, longer. So, yung mga waves na malapit sa red, they have lower frequency. As you can see here, lower frequency and longer wavelengths. So, mas mahaba yung wavelengths nila compared to those na malapit sa violet. So, yung mga waves na malapit sa violet, they have high frequency and shorter wavelengths compared to sa malapit sa red. Number 39, when waves are refracted, which property changes? So, yung nagbabago daw due to the refraction is yung speed of the wave. Refraction of waves involves a change in the direction of waves as they pass from one medium to another. Refraction or the bending of the path of the waves is accompanied by a change in speed and wavelength of the waves. So, as you can see here, di ba, yung pencil na nilagay sa glass of water so, kapag tiningin natin, mukhang nag-bend yung pencil na nasa water para siyang naputol. It's because yung light waves kasi, mas slower yung pag-travel niya sa water compared sa air. This one is the formula for the speed of wave, wavelength times the frequency. Number 40, a certain solar cooker is made of a big concave mirror. To get the greatest amount of reflected sunlight, where should the food be placed? So, yung answer dito is letter A, at the focus of the mirror. So, as you can see here, yan, yung concave mirror, tinatawag din siyang converging mirror, kasi at the focal point, dun nagko-converge yung sun rays or yung light rays, and dyan nako-concentrate yung heat. And then, pag sinabi namang convex mirror, yun yung diverging mirror. Another name for a concave mirror is a converging mirror. Its purpose is to point all the light that hits the medium on a single point. So, yun nga yung focal point. The point where all the rays cross each other is called the focal point. At this point, all the radiation that has hit them and been reflected by the mirror surface is focused. And it is this radiation that does the heating up. Number 41, an alpha particle is the same as... As you can see here, yung alpha particle is the same as 4 to helium. So, 4 yung atomic mass and 2 yung atomic number. And try to familiarize yourself with these symbols ng uh, radiation, ng alpha, beta, positron, proton, neutron, and gamma or gamma ray. Ayan, try nyo i-memorize kasi madalas siyang lumalabas sa mga practice sets and review materials. So, ito yung description nila. Please read na lang. And also, try to familiarize yung level of penetration ng bawat radiation. So, for example, yung beta, nakakatagos siya sa paper. And then, yung gamma, kaya niyang tumagos sa tin plates made of wood, aluminum, etc. Number 42, when a large atom, such as uranium-235, splits into smaller atoms, then the combined mass of the products resulting from the splitting will be 
yung answer natin is letter B, the same as the original mass. Yung tinutukoy na process dito, nag-split daw into two smaller atoms. So, yun ay fission. Kapag naman nag-join yung two or more lighter atoms into large one, ang tawag dun is fusion. Yung mass ng product, equal lang siya dun sa mass ng reactant. Kasi ba diba, according to the law of conservation of mass, yun yung sinasabi niya. Mass of the products in a chemical reaction must equal the mass of the reactants. Number 43, the atomic reaction where boron with atomic mass 13 and atomic number 6 becomes carbon with atomic mass 13 and atomic number 7 results in the release of... Yan. So kung mapapansin nyo, Hindi nag-change yung atomic mass, pero nag-change yung number of proton or nag-change yung atomic number na dagdagan ng proton. So, yung correct answer dito is letter C, a beta particle. Ayan. In beta decay, one of the neutrons in the nucleus suddenly changes into a proton, causing an increase in the atomic number of an element. That means that a reaction that changes the number of protons in the nucleus changes what element we actually consider the nucleus to be. Ayan. So this makes beta decay a great example of how nuclear reactions can eerily transform one substance into another. So for example, di ba, na-change yung boron into carbon. So ang galing, di ba? Ayan. Another thing pala, beta particles originate from the nucleus of a radioisotope from a neutron breaking up into a proton and electron. So, bale, yung neutron, nagbe-break down siya into proton and electron. And then, syempre, due to the addition of proton, magkakaroon ka ng bagong substance or ng element. Number 44, an electron is traveling at 1% the speed of light. What is its kinetic energy in joules? So, yung speed of light is given 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. So, ano bang formula ng kinetic energy? Yun ay 1 half mv squared or mass times velocity squared. Yung mass ng electron, dapat memorize natin, 9.1 times 10 raised to negative 31 kilograms. And then, yung velocity daw ng electron is 1% nung 3 times 10 raised to 8 or yung speed of light. So, 3 times 10 raised to 8 times yung 1%, pwede siyang isulat as 0 0.01 pero may hirapan ka mag-compute pag minultiply mo pa yan sa 0 0.01. So, gagawin natin siyang scientific notation. So, move natin yung decimal point to the right ng dalawang beses, 1, 2. So, meron kang 1 times 10 raised to negative 2. Kapag nag-move ka to the right, magiging negative yung exponent. Kapag to the left, positive. So, pwede natin sila i-multiply. 1 times 10 raised to negative 2. And then, we're going to apply the law of exponent sa pag-multiply natin. So, 3 times 1 is equal to 3. Times, since same yung base na 10, kopyan lang natin yung 10. And then, yung 8 and negative 2, pwede na natin silang i-add. So, 8 plus negative 2 is 6. So, meron tayong velocity na 3 times 10 raised to 6 meter per second. Ayan. Pwede na natin i-substitute sa formula. So, 1 half times the mass, 9.1 times 10 raised to negative 31 times 3 times 10 raised to 6. So, meron squared parate. Don't forget. So, gamitan natin ulit ng law of exponent para mas mabilis yung pag-solve. Ayan. So, yung 3 times 10 raised to 6 squared. 3 squared is 9, di ba? Times 10 raised to 6 squared. Kapag ganyan, pwede nyo na i-multiply yung exponent dun sa exponent na nasa labas. So, 6 times 2 is 12. So, 10 raised to 12. And then, makikita natin na 9.1 times 9. So, 9 times 9 is 81, di ba? And then, 0.1 times 9 is 0.9. So, 1 half times 81.9 times 10 raised to... Ayan, same ulit sila ng base na 10. So, pwede na natin gawin yung negative 31 plus 12. So, ang sagot doon is negative 19. And as you can see, wala naman tong value na to sa choices. Pero malapit siya dun syempre sa negative 18. Kapag minove natin yung 
decimal point to the left magiging 4.095 times 10 raised to negative 18. So, magma-minus tayo kasi nag-move tayo to the left. So, yung correct answer natin dito is letter B. 4.098 times 10 raised to negative 18 joules. Number 45, which of the following is an implication of the formula E is equal to mc squared? So, yung sagot dito is letter D. Relatively large amounts of energy can be obtained from relatively small amounts of matter. So, yung formula na yan is from Einstein's Theory of Special Relativity. As you can see here, yung C, yung value niyan is the speed of light or the 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Sobrang laking value niya. And then, is a square pa siya. So, malaki talaga yung magiging effect niya sa energy or malaki yung mapoproduce na energy because of the value of C. So, kahit maliit lang yung amount ng matter or yung mass na ilalagay mo dito sa M, malaki pa rin yung makukuha mong value kasi masyadong malaki yung value ng speed of light. Number 46, a beam of electrons is directed between two charge plates. So, ito yun, yung positive and negative charge plates as indicated in the diagram above. In which direction will the beam curve when it gets between the plates? So, electron siya. So, negative yung charge ng beam. and beam of electrons. So, yung correct answer dito, um, syempre, yung opposite charges kasi attract. So, negative charge will go to the positively charged plate. And then, kapag same naman yung charges, they will repel to each other. So, yung direction ng beam of electrons is papunta sa positive charge plate. So, yung correct answer is letter A. And then, this one is the table for protons, neutrons, and electrons. Dagdag info lang. So, yung charge ng proton is positive, neutron, neutral, or zero. Electrons, negative. And then, ito yung masses nila. Yan. Importante na ma-familiarize nyo yung sarili ninyo sa masses ng electrons, protons, and neutrons. Yan, yung neutrons pala, mas malaki ng onti yung mass niya compared to protons. Ayan, 1.673 ata yung protons and then 1.675 yung neutrons. Number 47, which of the following statements regarding isotopes are not true? So, hindi daw totoo. Ayan, yung correct answer dito is letter C, all isotopes are radioactive. May tinatawag kasi tayong stable isotopes. So, those are non-radioactive forms of atoms. Yan, kapag sinabi palang isotopes, those are members of a family of an element that all have the same number of protons. So, remember this one, same sila ng number of protons, pero different numbers of neutrons. Yan, so, for example, itong hydrogen, yung mass number niya is 1, meron siyang isang proton. Ayan, lahat sila may isang proton, pero magkakaiba sila ng number of neutrons. So, yung deuterium, meron siyang 2 na mass number kasi meron siyang isang proton, may isang neutron. And then, yung tritium naman, yung mass number niya is 3 kasi meron siyang isang proton and 2 neutrons. Some facts naman about isotope. All elements have isotopes. There are two main types of isotopes, merong stable and unstable. Yung unstable isotopes, those are radioactive isotopes. There are 254 known stable isotopes. All artificial lab-made isotopes are unstable and therefore radioactive. So, kapag man-made, automatic unstable isotope yun. Ayan. Scientists call them radioisotopes. Some elements can only exist in an unstable form. For example, uranium. Hydrogen is the only element whose isotopes have unique names. Ayan, yung kanina, deuterium for hydrogen with one neutron, and tritium for hydrogen with two neutrons. Number 48, which of the following statements is not true of protons and electrons? Yung correct answer dito is letter A. Protons and electrons have equal masses. Yung masses kasi nila is magkaiba. Ayan, yung sa electron... 9.1 times 10 raised to negative 31 and sa proton 1.63 times 10 raised to negative 27 kilograms. 
Number 49, the radiation from a sample of krypton-85 decreases to one-third of the original intensity in a period of 18 years. What would be the intensity after 18 more years? So, nung 18 years daw, nag-decrease yung sample into one-third no original intensity or I naught. Yan. So, ibig sabihin, after 18 more years, magde-decrease siya ulit ng one-third. Kasi, di ba, according to radioactive decay law, yung decay rate daw is constant. Yan. Same lang din naman ng years. So, ibig sabihin, magde-decrease siya ng thrice. So, yung answer natin will become one-third times one-third I naught. So, magiging 1 over 9 I naught. So, ito yung answer natin, which is letter D. Number 50, in a uranium-235 fusion, represented by the equation above, xenon-140 and strontium-94 nuclei are produced and energy is released. How many N is or are given off in the process? So, yung N dito is yung neutron. Yan. So, dito gagamitin natin siya ng law of conservation of mass. Ibig sabihin, kailangan mabalance natin yung mass na nasa reactant and yung mass na nasa product. So, dapat maging equal sila. Bale, ayan, titingnan natin yung mga atomic mass. Equate natin sila sa isa't isa. So, 235 plus 1 from the neutron is equal to yan, 140 na atomic mass from xenon, 140 plus 94 galing sa strontium plus, ito yung hinahanap natin, yung kung ilan daw yung neutron na nag-give off in the process. So, bale, plus x. Kasi hindi natin alam kung ilan yung neutron na nag-give off. So, 236 is equal to 234 plus x. And then, in, pag minus mo yan, 236 minus 234, x is equal to 2. So, yan yung number of neutrons na nag-give off sa process, which is letter B.